Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So today I'm making just a really small drift. Now, every now and then you may find that you need to have some really small drifts for some slot punched holes. Uh, when we think about drifts nowadays, we think about hammer drifts and axe and tomahawk eye drifts and things of that nature. And we always think of really big things, just big, big drifts. But you can utilize small drifts for little tiny slot punched holes. A lot of times what will happen when you slot punch a hole, you'll get a lot of drag down or you'll get some bevel on both sides. And that's really not ideal if you're going to do something like a tenon, uh, do a mortise and tenon joint. So whenever we're making mortises, whenever we're making mortises in steel, it's always good to go through your slot punched hole with a bit of a drift. Now, I'm making this out of a piece of high carbon tool steel. I do not know what quality this steel is. This was an old chisel that I ended up cutting off and I used the end for something else uh, as a high carbon bit for something. So I don't know what the material of this chisel was, but I'm repurposing it into a drift. Now, with that being said, drifts do not need to be hardened. Uh, mainly they're just going to soften up anyhow and so you don't have to heat treat them. So it's, this is really a simple forging process. You want to forge, you want to forge out the drift to the shape and size you need. And after you get it forged out to the shape and size you need, you just want to take and go ahead and let it heat up slowly, it, you know, up back up to a critical, let it cool down after you're done forging, and then bring it back up to like a critical temperature, and then just let it kind of cool or ease off uh, by the edge of the fire. That's good enough for most drifts if it's a high enough uh, tool steel, so say like a coil spring or a leaf spring, that'll work out well. So while that's heating up, um, Mainly I'm just going to take and be shaping this into a half inch or 12.5 mil uh, slot drift by about, ooh, I would say somewhere around the realm of about a quarter inch or six mil. So it'll be half by six and that's for uh, fairly small slots that you would find in something like lock work or something of that nature. But while that's, while that's heating up and it's almost there now, uh, I just wanted to take and say, if you guys haven't checked out our website over at blacksmithpdfs.com, we've been adding new things there uh, that might be of use to you. Some of you have already been over there and have seen all the different up upgrades and stuff we've done to the site, different plan bundles we offer that support this channel. So if you want to support this channel and you like these type of videos, that's a great way to do it, is to go over there. The link for that is in the description down below. So we'll just continue forging this out here. I'm almost to size. So once I get basically to size on the one end that I want to be, I'm going to forge the rear end of this. So just planishing up the faces so this way everything's nice and trued up. We're going to give it a quick brush. Good to go. Take out a little bit of a bend here. Now this is not a forging stage. Do you want to be whacking around a lot on this? Because this is really dark now. We're going to flip it around. And now we're going to go ahead and forge out the other end. So unlike large drifts for something like a hammer that you'd be forging on, unlike a large drift uh, where you want to just drive the drift all the way through, these small drifts you're meant to stick in the hole drive them in a little bit and then work on the piece to even up the edges of the hole. You don't want to have to pass these all the way through. There's two different types of drifts out there. There's pass through drifts and then there's handheld drifts or ones that you hold on to and you only work, it's something that you work out the cheeks on the hammers with or you work out uh, squeezing in the sides or corrective measures on a hole that's went wonky on you. So there's two types of drifts there. Just keep that in mind whenever you're making these. Go ahead and switch up to a different style tongs to hold this other end. We'll keep that bit hot.
So I'm filming this in real time just because I want to show you guys about how long it ought to take you to do something like this. Uh, later on when I go, when I actually go to grind this drift, I'm going to take the end, the very end that you'll insert through the hole, and I'm going to grind that down and give it a little bit of a radius on the, on the tip. So this way it can slip through a slot punched hole uh, that is already of the correct size. I'm going to go ahead and grind that down. So this way it can fit in and then start drifting to the proper size. Uh, versus having a really long taper that might get thin and floppy and bend, I want it to be fairly stout because with these little drifts, they'll suck up the heat pretty quick. So we don't want to make it too thin out at our end. Otherwise it'll bend all up on us. Okay. So now, I'm going to forge down this other end. And really, the only purpose in doing this is to give me just a little more length in the drift. Again, this will not be a pass through drift. The squarer and cleaner that you forge at this stage, the easier your grinding or file work will be. So I'm going to take that one more heat, but that's just me being fussy. So I'm going to go ahead and drive that out a little bit and go to town here. So one of the other things I'd like to point out at this next stage after I'm done with this heat, I'm going ahead and prepping to put my touch mark into the piece. I want my drifts touch mark and things like that. You see me with green tape all the time, that's so I can find my tools when I do demonstrations or I teach someplace. It's important to have a touch mark on your pieces. The green tape just makes it more high visibility so I can actually find my, find my tools after it's all said and done. Get that prepped. Stick with me, we're almost done here. Show you the final care. Go ahead and get this a little hotter. Okay. Got everything lined up. Take the corners, sharp corners off that end. To identify that that's the end that we want to be holding, not this other end. Again, make sure it's nice and squared up. And now's the time to punch in the touch mark. Right, cha. You also, if you're working with a small touch mark, you don't want to leave it on there very long. You can over temper your touch mark, so be careful when you're doing hot work like that. And so there you have it. That's done. So this looks basically like nothing. This looks like a small bar, but it will work for what I'm trying to go for. Again, this is to take and dress, dress out the sides of a drifted hole, and uh, it'll work well. So this is the last bit here. Basically, we want to just heat this up, let it cool nice and slow and just set it off to the side of the fire and then you know we've got ourselves a basic drift so hope you enjoyed this video if you did leave a like comment below what you thought of the video um you know i'll try to do other videos around drifts making different drifts and for diff showing you how they get used and things like that in the future so make sure to subscribe if you're interested in seeing more videos like that and again, if you want to support the channel, a great way of doing that is to go to blacksmithpdfs.com. Uh, that greatly helps out whenever you purchase a plan bundle or power hammer plans of any kind or the additional helpful resources that we have over there at the website. Again, the links for that is in the description down below. Thank you all for watching. Without further ado, I'm going to get back to forging. God bless you, and we'll catch you on the next one.